Good morning to you, Doctor. You know, we watched, uh, we watched these protests taking place and the unrest all across the country. Uh, some people were masked, some people weren't. Um, what's your state of concern at this moment? Well, look, I think there's going to be a lot of challenges coming out of the events of the past week. Um, one of them is going to be that probably chains of transmission will have gotten lit by the large gatherings. I don't think that there's really a question about that. Minnesota, in particular, um, was experiencing a large outbreak of its own. They really didn't have full control of the epidemic. It was expanding. Hospitalizations were going up. They're still going up. Um, so that's going to be another challenge coming out of these events. Um, you know, the, the mayor of Atlanta suggested that anybody who was involved with any of the protests or were out on the streets should go get tested this week. Uh, what would you recommend uh, across across the country take place? Should everybody go get tested? Well, look, I, I, it's unclear what the um, what the prevalence is in these different areas and who is in those crowds. I think your risk has to do with what the prevalence is in the community that you're in. You see a lot of communities in the United States right now where the prevalence is very low, where you see cases coming down, others where it's high. Um, I don't know particularly about Atlanta, but certainly when you look in Minnesota, you see a higher prevalence in other parts of the nation. Um, a lot of people who are in these crowds are young people who probably weren't heeding a lot of the warnings anyway about social distancing. Um, but these certainly brought together big groups of people and increased the risk that you're going to see some transmission coming out of these events. Again, there's a lot of difficult issues coming out of these events. This is just one of them. But I think you're going to see some chains of transmission that will have gotten lit from these large gatherings, from these protests. Well, let me let me ask you about that, only because we've talked about being outdoors uh, so often and also about warmer weather and whether that has any impact on this. Is there any chance uh, that that, uh, that that we dodge this in some way? Well, the question is, dodge what? I mean, I mean you I'm not going to sit here and imply that we're going to have major epidemics growing out of these protests. I think we're going to have some cases that get started as a result of the social interactions from these protests. These aren't, you know, normal, typical social interactions. These are a lot of people grouped together in crowds where they're not, you know, taking good precautions. Um, a lot of people were wearing masks. They were taking them off if you watch the photos. So it's a higher risk environment. This isn't a day at the beach or you know, going out to a picnic where you're outside and you might be in larger groups, but uh, there's some social distancing and you're able to take precautions uh, in these kinds of gatherings, these kinds of crowds, um, many of which lost control of the crowds. Um, you're not going to be able to take those kinds of precautions. So it is a risk. There's no question that it's one of the risks coming out of the events of the past week. Doctor, you know, one of the one of the points, though, that Mark and Walter made in the last segment is that this is going to disproportionately impact uh, those that are, are, are lower income may have a lower uh, capacity or ability uh, to get health care. Um, I'm just trying to think through some of the, the permutations, especially this week, in terms of trying to get people help in advance to the extent they can. Also, uh, lots of these young people may be living with people who are older. Well, look, when you look at COVID generally, it's very, very heavily disproportionately impacted people from lower economic groups and also black Americans and Hispanic Americans. Um, if you just look at the data, about one in five counties based on U.S. Census data are disproportionately black counties. It accounts for about 35 percent of the U.S. population. Yet those counties account for 50 percent of the COVID illness in this country and 58 percent of COVID deaths. So this disease has disproportionately affected those communities for a host of reasons. Um, you know, and, and the fact that the protests took part, took, took part in large measure in the same communities, I think is going to exacerbate the strains on these communities. Uh, you saw businesses destroyed and, you know, stores shut. And so that's going to exacerbate strains on communities that have already, already been very hard hit by the virus itself. 